But now, let's look at ourselves. <laughs> they, all of them, are using some kind of goal-seeking machinery, some kind of neo-purpose, which has been put there by natural selection with an archaeo-purpose. One of the main virtues of advanced goal-seeking machines with a neo-purpose is flexibility. These machines are easy to reprogram to seek a different goal. A captured enemy missile may be reprogrammed to seek out and destroy its original creators. The very property that makes the missile so effective in achieving its goal, its very flexibility and versatility, that very property makes the machinery easy to subvert to a new purpose. Which brings me back to the problem I raised earlier. Why is it that humans appear to seek goals that have nothing to do with the survival and propagation of their own genes? Why do we set up goals like making money, composing a cantata, winning a war or an election, a game of chess or tennis? Why aren't all our goals related to the one central goal of propagating our genes? And the answer is that it's our capacity to set up goals and to reprogram our goal-seeking machinery rapidly and flexibly that's been built into us by natural selection. This goal-seeking capacity and its inherent properties of flexibility and reprogrammability is an immensely useful piece of brain technology, useful in propagating genes. That's why it evolved in the first place. But, by its very nature, it carries the seeds of its own subversion. Precisely because of its flexible reprogrammability, it's highly prone to seek new goals. There's a paradox in this virtue of flexible reprogrammability. If a machine is too ready to change its goals, it will never achieve any of them. What's required is some mixture of flexibility in setting up new goals, coupled with tenacity and inflexibility in pursuing them. Our brains are flexible enough to be reprogrammed away from goals that are directly concerned with gene survival, and individual survival, and towards a new and arbitrary purpose, which might be inspired by religion, by patriotism, by sense of duty, by loyalty to the party, loyalty to the country. But they are inflexible enough, once reprogrammed, to spend an entire lifetime seeking the new goal. And yet another paradox, they can show great versatility and flexibility in the setting up of new sub-goals in the service of an inflexibly pursued superior goal, which may yet not be the Darwinian goal of survival. It may yet be the welfare of the party, of the faith, of the country, or whatever it is. There's a hierarchy of goals within goals. This subtle interplay between flexibility and inflexibility is something we need to work hard to understand because it has vitally important consequences. Does this posture of a hunting wolf remind you of anything? The sheepdog has been bred to herd sheep or other, uh, other animals, making use of a hunting behavior pattern derived from the wolf ancestor. The hunting behavior of the ancestral wolf has been subverted by human breeding to a new purpose. There's a hunting wolf, and you can see exactly the same movement as a herding sheepdog. Subversion of goals. The patron saint of goal subversion is the Alec Guinness character in the film Bridge on the River Kwai. Colonel Nickel was a prisoner of war of the Japanese. He was a loyal British soldier. He showed great bravery in the face of Japanese torture. But he was also an army officer and an engineer. And 
Once he had finally been persuaded to undertake the building of a bridge, for reasons that I won't go into, a bridge that was for the Japanese war effort, he became doggedly determined to finish the bridge and to make it the best bridge ever built. He proudly imagines that the bridge, now almost completely a British endeavor, will last 600 years. He declares, we can teach these barbarians a lesson in Western methods and efficiency that will put them to shame. We'll show them what the British soldier is capable of doing. And amazingly, he doesn't seem to realize that he's helping the barbarians achieve a key war objective. He has set up a new goal in total contradiction to the official goal of defeating the Japanese. And once he set up that goal, he pursued it tenaciously with intelligence, versatility, engineering skill, all the qualities that he should have been using against the enemy. The story of the Bridge on the River Kwai is, of course, fiction, but the fact that audiences can empathize with Colonel Nicholson suggests that it conveys an important psychological truth. We can imagine behaving as he does. We can imagine setting up a sub-goal which completely subverts the main goal that we ought to be pursuing, insane as that is. What are some of the biological goals, the natural biological goals, the archaeo purposes that are susceptible to subversion by neo-purposes? Well, I've listed a few here, there are some more. Hunger. Our evolved desire for sweet, ripe fruit and fat has been hijacked to seek out super sweet and fatty foods. We didn't evolve with vending machines and McDonald's, so we have no evolved protection against overeating. We eat when food is available, because that would have been a good idea in our wild state, and now in the Western world, it is always available. A biologically sensible lust for sweet things is easily subverted, and we eat too much of it, it rots our teeth and makes us fat. Subversion of sex. <laughs> well, it's easy to laugh at the moose trying to copulate with the statue of the bison. <laughs> but we forget how easily human males can become aroused by a crude computer-generated image. <laughs> and at least the statue of the bison is in 3D. Sexual... <laughs> sexual desires can be subverted to gain power. For frustrated young men, access to women is a primary goal, an all-consuming purpose. How easy it is for those in power to subvert it. <laughs> 